So off camera flash can be intimidating, but it doesn't have to be. Today, I'm gonna to share a simple one off camera flash setup that you can use at your very next wedding. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so excited that you're here. This is a place where we love to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you into a little bit of the behind the scenes of our day-to-day -day life. So the number one thing you need to know if you are aspiring to be a professional photographer or if you are a professional photographer, Learning off-camera flash is the number one way to make your images from a reception more professional instantly. You have to learn how to create dimensional light. Anybody can use an on-camera flash. That's that's pretty easy to do, but it takes professional level education to learn how to use an off-camera flash and create dimensional light that mirrors the type of light that you would shoot with outside. So just a little disclaimer, I do not shoot with this setup right now. I've been in the industry for 12 years, and so I have advanced my off-camera flash to a next level. You can kind of think of off-camera flash in the idea of tiers, all right? So if you have only ever used one on-camera flash, then we're taking you up a tier today with this simple setup. We're just gonna step it up a notch. But there, there are more ways that you can grow. So I use an umbrella at my weddings nowadays. I use two off-camera flashes. That's a totally different setup. You don't need to learn that if you just are still working with one on-camera flash and you're just like, hey, I just need to try off-camera flash and see what it will do. And it's gonna make a significant difference. But just know that this is not what you would see me if you are a part of KG All Access, you watch me shoot weddings all the time and you're like, this isn't what you do. Well, that's because I'm showing you a basic, simple setup that I used for years that works great. But now when I'm shooting, I do use a more advanced setup, which we'll have another video in the future for that. But this is a great place to start if you're new completely to off-camera flash. So before we dive into the actual setup, you should understand why this is even important in the first place. Why does it make a big difference to take a flash off the camera and why does it make images look more professional? Well, if you use an on-camera flash and you just use the bounce card, right? It's great that this bounce card is gonna soften the light that hits the subject. But if I'm taking a picture of someone and I'm using this flash, the flash is gonna fire, push light flat against my client's faces. So there are not, there's not gonna be any highlight and shadow. This flash is coming directly from my angle and hitting them directly. And that's gonna be a decent image, right? They're gonna be exposed for, it's kind of bottom of the line though. It's not impressive, it's not professional, and there's no dimension, there's no highlight and shadow. And highlight and shadow, when used the right way, uh, it makes everything look more high end. So the objective of this flash is to place it at a certain angle. I like to use like a 45 degree angle away from myself and my subjects because that light is going to hit the subjects from an angle. So when it hits like the, the folds of the dresses or the features of people's faces, it's gonna create a little bit of light shadow on their faces. So a highlight on one side and slight shadow on the other side. And that is what makes a picture look more professional. That is what takes a standard reception shot with a flat flash on someone's face um, to the next level. So let's talk about the equipment you will need for this setup. You're gonna need uh, at least two speed light flashes. I use the Canon 600 EX RT2 flashes. We love these. You do not have to use Canon. You could use something else, um, but we prefer these because I've always used Canon flashes and I love the built-in transmitters. You're gonna need a light stand. This light stand is nothing fancy. It's from Amazon. I can link it below. You're also gonna need a mount for your flash. You could use the one that comes with your flash or you could buy one that's a little bit upgraded. This is just from Amazon as well. We'll link that. Nothing fancy, super simple. You're also gonna need rechargeable batteries, AA batteries. We use Inaloop Pro and we love them. They last longer than standard, like traditional everyday batteries. All right, so let's talk about specialty dances. So we're talking the bride and groom's first dance. Uh, we're talking about the mother's son, the daddy daughter. When these dances are happening, you have a little bit more control over these dances, all right? So they're normally in the middle of the dance floor. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, I don't want to expose them with this bounce card from the sidelines. You know, I can't be really close to them. I don't wanna just use a high flash power and push flash from my own camera. 
I want to utilize my off camera because that's going to make it look more high end and more professional. So the first thing I do at this part of the day is I go to the dance floor and I decide what do I want in the background. Probably don't want the DJ um, so and all of his equipment. So I find what background I want and then from that position I will set up my off camera flash either to the right of me 45 degrees or to the left of me 45 degrees and that is a great starting place. Now the second thing that I do is I test the power of this off camera flash. So I'll have Michael or you would have your second shooter stand where approximately we think the couple will be dancing and we take a test shot. So we can start at 1 64th power. It's kind of like mid range and we can decide is that bright enough? Is that too dark? then you make some adjustments. So for me, my approach to using off camera flash and flash in general is that I would rather have low powered flash and higher ISO because I love to have glow in my flash images. I don't want my image to just be a flash hitting the subject and then a completely black background. I don't like that. I don't think it looks professional and it really doesn't mimic my style. So if I want to have that glow, I have two options of how I can get that. I can either get that by increasing my ISO or I can get that by lowering my shutter. So something else to consider, once the bride and groom enter, they're doing their dance, you have your setup, you're either have your off camera flash 45 degrees to the right or 45 degrees to the left. What if the couple doesn't stand exactly where you practice and set up your shot? You might have to adjust a little bit. So there's a little bit of wiggle room. You can move a little bit closer to the flash or a little further away. That's fine, but you want to make sure that you don't scoot so far to the flash that you're shooting right beside it. Why? Because it's going to be just like you're shooting with your on camera flash and it's flat because it's coming from the same exact angle as your camera. You also don't want to go so far on the other side of the dance floor that you're shooting into your flash, meaning that when you're looking through your viewfinder and you're actually shooting, you can see your flash behind the couple and that's going to just cause a horrible glare and you're not going to have any dimension. It's just going to be kind of a whiteout situation. So another part of the wedding day would be like toast and cake cutting. And I'm going to lump these two together because uh, it's the same general concept. You have someone standing somewhere where you want to photograph them. They're doing something where everyone's attention is on them, whether they're cutting the cake or someone's holding the microphone talking. So for toast during the reception, um, I kind of set it up the way that I would do bride and groom first dance um, or other dances. I would ask the DJ or the planner, someone who's in charge, uh, where they're going to have the toaster stand um, in relation to the bride and groom. If I have any say or power in this, I normally love to have them stand right beside the bride and groom so that I can stand back and only shoot that one direction. And when that's the case, then I have more ability to hit both of them with my off camera flash. But let's say someone is toasting the bride and groom in the middle of the dance floor and the bride and groom are sitting way off to the side at the sweetheart table. So what do you do then with this flash setup? Well, I would have this off camera flash um, probably actually hitting the bride and groom to capture their reactions. And then as far as capturing the person who's toasting, I try to be as close to them as possible because I'm going to need to shoot them and expose for them with my bounce card. And the closer I am to them, uh, the more power I have with my, my flash power and the, the better the image will turn out. So I want to try to be as close to the person that I'm photographing um, with my bounce card. You don't want to be a distraction, but you want to be close to them knowing that you can turn and then photograph the bride and groom's reaction and they're going to be exposed for with this off camera flash. So for cake cutting, this can be a little interesting because there are different scenarios. Sometimes the cake is in the center of the dance floor and you can set it up just like the other two setups I just explained, right? So just like bride and groom dancing for the first dance, just like toast. Um, if you know the toast and the bride and groom toaster and the bride and groom are in the same spot, you could just face them, have this 45 degrees to the left or 45 degrees to the right. That would be easy, but sometimes, Cakes are in a tight little corner of the reception area and you don't have enough space to have this, you know, 10 feet away from them, low flash power off to a 45 degree angle. Um, sometimes if you attempt that, you're going to have grandma's head in between the flash and the bride and groom and it's going to cast a shadow. So what do you do when you're in a cake cutting situation with this off camera flash setup? How do you make that work? So what I'm going to explain to you now is another option, another way to get professional images with one off camera flash without an umbrella. Um, and I use this quite often 
when I find myself in scenarios where there's just not a lot of space. Well, I would take my off-camera flash and instead of using my off-camera flash to expose for the front of the couple, all right, so the light hitting the front of them, I'm gonna start using this off-camera flash in a completely different way. I'm gonna take the off-camera flash and I'm gonna put it in the back of the room behind them, all right, hidden behind them. It doesn't have to be directly behind them. It could be 45 degrees off to the side so I can't even see it in the background when I'm looking through my viewfinder. And I'm going to get closer to them because again, we're in tight quarters and I'm gonna use my bounce card, low flash power for the bounce card so it's not too intense. And this is gonna fire in the background and create a glow behind their heads. And that adds depth to the image, it adds dimension to the image, and it honestly mirrors what I like for my normal natural light portraits to look like when I'm just shooting with the glow of the sun. So I love this setup. Um, the only thing that you kind of lose is the fact that you are shooting and exposing for the front of them with a bounce card, and that creates somewhat of a flat light. But in the situation where you're really tight and in close quarters with a cake, I honestly think this is the most professional option with a setup like this. So another part of the reception where you may need to rethink, how am I going to set up this simple flash setup to capture this part of the day is party dancing, all right? So that's when the events are over, the formal events, and like the dance floor is open and everyone's having a good time and dancing. It's a lot of fun. How do you capture this, right? Because you can't capture it the way that you captured the first dance or the daddy-daughter dance, right? There are gonna be hands and movement. People are going to be blocking this off-camera flash from hitting whatever you're trying to focus and, and expose for. So I take the approach that I just mentioned for the cake in close quarters. I use my off-camera flash to be in the background to create a, a really pretty wash, like glow of light in the background, um, which means if you, if you want it to truly make the whole background glow, then you want to have it pretty far away. You don't want to have it just really close behind the one person or the group of people on the dance floor. Um, you want to have it maybe off in one corner of the room, um, maybe to the left or to the right. And so for me, I try to think of it as I'm either going to put the off-camera flash 45 degrees back in that corner or 45 degrees back in that corner, and I'm going to be shooting from this area of the dance floor into that off-camera flash light the whole night. Um, and so how do you expose for the front of these people dancing on the dance floor? I use my bounce card and I'm normally photographing, well, always photographing party dancing with a wider lens. So either a 35 millimeter or the new uh, 28 to 70 2.0 R lens that I just did a video about recently. So it's always a wider lens, which means I'm always pretty close to what I'm capturing, which means that this power, the, the power of my on-camera flash with a bounce card is gonna be very low. Um, and I want it to be low because if I'm really close to the people on the dance floor um, having a good time dancing, I don't want this to be so intense that it blinds them, disrupts them. One of the great ways to learn about how to manage your off-camera flash and how to learn um, how your position affects the way your images are gonna turn out is to put this off-camera flash that's gonna be uh, providing the glow in the background off to the side, pretty far away from the dance floor, and then start shooting from all around the different corners of the dance floor. And so if you are shooting from the same direction as that off-camera flash, you're gonna see flat light. If you're gonna shoot with it kind of off in the background, you can't even see the light, you're gonna see a really pretty wash in the background of light. But then if you go a little bit further and you can see your off-camera flash behind your subjects, you can actually create a really cool halo glow if you are directly you, the subject, and the flash, and you can't even see the flash because it's behind their head. But that's a little bit risky because you can get too much haze that way. So during the reception, leave the flash in one spot and start shooting from different angles of the dance floor to, to figure out what you prefer. I prefer to have this off to the side of the dance floor, pretty far back, and to have kind of a wash of light in the background. So there's light in the background, but it's not necessarily um, right behind my subject's heads because that can create a really bad haze and then I can't have the pop that I love in my images. So if you want to apply this simple setup to your next wedding reception, um, but you want to gain more experience before then, I would highly recommend trying out KJ All Access. KJ All Access is basically a membership program that allows students to watch me photograph real wedding days. So you could watch me take everything that I just showed you and watch me set up my own flashes on a wedding day. Watch me photograph bride and groom dancing, party dancing, cake cutting, on a wedding day, you can watch me move my flash stands and see me make decisions based off of what the reception location looks like. It's awesome because it's basically like you get to be my third virtual shooter and you get to go with me in real life situations and see me mess up, see me thrive and learn in the process. So 
There's a link below. There's actually a free trial. You can watch a free trial episode if you don't feel like diving in um, and becoming an active member. You can watch a free trial, watch a full wedding day and see if it's for you. So don't miss that. That's a link below. It Honestly, if you've never seen anything like this, why would you not try the free trial and just see what I just taught you today in action? So find that below. Subscribe if you like this. Make sure you subscribe so you can see other videos coming in the future. Thanks Bye. for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.